I'm going to give you a quick update from the life of the church. And the area of responsibility that I have right now is Eurasia, which is Europe, the former Soviet Union, the Middle East, uh, India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, that kind of area. And um, then I have Canada, and then I have the Olivet region. So geographically, it's half of the world, and I don't know what the other five guys are doing, but. <laughs> All right, there's a lot of church in other places, but you know. All right. And, and I'm just, uh, that's not it. That's not my slideshow. Um, it just starts, it starts with that one that says, it's, it's the one that's Sunberg. It doesn't, it should have my name on it. The other ones belong to the other boys. There you go. Okay, good. Um, so I'm just going to try and give a report in 10 minutes because that's about what we've got left for 8,000 churches. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> First of all, let me give you this passage of scripture. It's one you may have read just a few weeks ago. But Luke chapter 24. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices that they had prepared and they went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. risen indeed. I just wanted to check on that. Let's try that again. He is not here. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the son of man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away wondering to himself what had happened. I want to focus for a few minutes on the word nonsense. The women tried to tell them what had happened, and they said, it was nonsense. It's kind of like mountains ought to move. Well, that's nonsense. So I just want to share with you a little bit of nonsense. I'm going to skip the next slide, and I want to go to the one where we're standing and holding onto a globe. And the point is really, has the church changed all that much even then since the first century? Here's a little bit of nonsense. Every time we open a new world area, the general superintendents, we pray over that world area on this globe that's existed in the general superintendent's office for about 70 years. We are praying for the opening of the work of the Church of the Nazarene in the country of Belgium. Now, let me just tell you, that's nonsense, because everybody would tell you that in post-Christian, secular Europe, we should not be starting new works in the Church of the Nazarene. That's nonsense. But the last two countries that we have entered in the Church of the Nazarene are in Northern Europe. God is at work. Mountains are moving. And so there we are praying over Belgium. The next slide, I tell you what, sometimes you're traveling and your flight makes a detour. And that's a bit of nonsense as well. Chuck and I were scheduled to fly down to Amman, Jordan on October the 10th. Now, maybe you know what happened on October the 7th. And so we were flying down from Manchester, England, where our daughter lives, and we were trying to go to Amman. During the night, the flight just kept taking longer and longer and longer. Well, the reason it was taking longer was that they were trying to figure out how to get us into Amman, Jordan. Because you see, there were too many rockets firing over Israel or flying between Lebanon and Israel. And so we had to go all the way around down Egypt and across the Sinai Peninsula and make our way back up. That's a little bit of nonsense. But the next slide that you'll see, we made it to Amman, and we're standing on the rooftop of the Church of the Nazarene, looking over the city of Amman, and God is doing some incredible nonsense in the Middle East. The next slide that you see is from the Church of the Nazarene in Madaba in Jordan. Praise God. God is at work there. The next slide is Pastor Walid. He was a student of Chuck and mine years ago, and so it was great to be at his church there in Madaba. 
That night we traveled down to the Dead Sea and we were at the Dead Sea looking over and we could see Israel in the distance. You could not go to Israel. The borders were all closed. We were literally 25 miles from Jerusalem and you just stood there and you began to pray for peace in this world because we have a bunch of nonsense going on. And let me tell you, people say, well, how do you pray? I say, God, may your kingdom come and your will be done. The reality is with the Church of the Nazarene in the Middle East, 95% of those who are followers of Jesus Christ, members of our church are Arabs. That's who Jesus has been ministering to and we are ministering to in that part of the world. And let me just tell you, this is messy and this is complicated. And in Jerusalem, First Church of the Nazarene, we have people there that serve on the Israeli defense ministries and we've got others that work in Gaza and they all go to the same Nazarene church. So pray for God's intervention and God's peace in this world. The next slide though, on Friday night, we had district assembly anyways. And people couldn't all get there because there were roadblocks. There'd been protests of 100,000 people in the city of, of Amman that day. But we went ahead and we had district assembly. And it was an amazing night and the spirit of the Lord was there. The next slide was we had ordination and we had a beautiful ordination service. The next slide, you'll see the ordinands that are there and the woman in the white shirt and with the black vest on, she was the first woman to be ordained in the country of Jordan. And I don't mean in the church of the Nazarene, I mean in any church ever. She was the first woman to be ordained in that country. And you, through the Church of the Nazarene, people would say, well, that's nonsense. It is. We had ministers from other churches and denominations show up to see what us Nazarenes were up to. The Catholic priest, he left when I got up to preach. But, you know, that <laughs> happens. They just weren't too sure of what all we were up to, this craziness. But God's at work, and God's doing great things things. The next slide you'll see is we had to take a detour to Armenia. We were supposed to have gone to Beirut and we couldn't because there were too much fighting that was going on. But it was a joy to go up to Armenia. The next slide you'll see the nonsense that's in our world. The woman that I'm praying over with the hat on her head, her name is Angela. And Angela is originally from Aleppo in Syria. And ISIS came into their home and murdered her husband and murdered her father. And so she and her children got away and they made their way to Yerevan in Armenia and that's where our Nazarene church is and there we are ministering to people but once she arrived there she discovered she had stage four breast cancer and so we were praying for Angela's healing that day and let me tell you today I've gotten the report Angela is in remission she's doing great and we say thanks be to God. <laughs> Oh, and God and his nonsense. The next slide, this is me standing with my friend named Gohar. Gohar, we got to know her 20 years ago in Armenia. She gave her life to Jesus Christ. Her whole family did. Chuck had the privilege of baptizing her family. The day that they were baptized, they planted walnut trees in their yard. And Gohar has been learning and following Jesus Christ. And the next slide, this is just nonsense. This was in March. I got to ordain my friend Gohar in Kazakhstan. Thanks be to God. And the next slide, the fruit of your labor, we got walnuts from the walnut tree. The next slide talks just about more war, a bunch of nonsense. It has to do with, with Armenia and Azerbaijan and in the midst of all the other wars, people have forgotten that there are more wars and God's helping us to meet people's needs. The next slide, Chuck and I got to go on a retreat with all of the district superintendents from Northern Europe. And here we are in Belfast and we're having a prayer meeting and we are praying for revival to come to Northern Europe. And let me just tell you something. This is the nonsense of the story because somehow revival is coming to Europe and I sense a revival and a movement of God's Holy Spirit that I have never experienced in my lifetime. I've lived 21 years of my life in Europe. I was born there. This is not what I would have imagined that God would be doing. Did you know that among all the churches, not Nazarene, but everybody, everybody all together, in France over Easter Sunday, 16,000 people were baptized. I mean, something is happening, folks and God is doing it. It's nonsense. I'm going to skip the next slide, but I just want to go to the one that says ordinations in Sicily. We had an incredible privilege of ordaining young leaders in the Church of the Nazarene in Italy. Thanks be to God. The next slide, we traveled up to Copenhagen, and there we are at the Sweet Surrender Coffee Shop. 
This was a Nazarene Compassionate Ministry project that we began in the downtown of the city of Copenhagen where it says cafe. We bought that part of the building. It used to be a billiard hall and a, and a bar. And today it's this beautiful coffee shop. The next slide, this makes it even more nonsense. This young lady right here, she's originally from Azerbaijan. They are Armenians. They were refugees. They made their way to Volgograd, Russia. And as a teenager, she gave her heart and life to Jesus Christ through the Church of the Nazarene. And then a work and witness team from Denmark came and visited Volgograd. She and one of the guys fell in love, moved back to Denmark. She runs this coffee shop in Denmark, leading people to Jesus Christ, one of our teenagers from Russia. I mean, isn't that just nonsense? It is. The next picture is from Paris. And boy, folks, you better be praying for Paris these days. As the Olympics will be there soon and all the elections and everything that's going on and I just have to tell you, there's nothing and no place in Europe that feels as secular and godless as France. We began the Church of the Nazarene there a number of years ago, and it just has never really gone all that well. And nearly 10 years ago, we were ready to close the Church of the Nazarene in France. And then God did something. And you know, part of it is we always thought that we were planting white European French churches. But God has other plans. So God began sending people to France that love Jesus from places like Haiti, the Caribbean, French-speaking Africa, and they've shown up there. And God is doing something amazing. And the next slide, it's from a gathering that we had in November of last year. They wanted to have a mini general assembly in Paris. They had sent seven representatives to General Assembly. And they came back and they were so blown away. They said, we love this church. We're going to be Nazarenes. So they said, next time we're sending double the number of people. And that day we had 350 Nazarenes who were worshiping and praising Jesus. And they are so excited and they are so turned on for what Jesus is doing. We now have a thriving district in France and... Our immigrant populations are now leading white European French people to Jesus Christ. So the next slide that you see there is they even had Jesus as Lord bags that they were giving out to everybody. It was just a day of nonsense. The next slide, real quickly, we went to India where we celebrated 125 years of the Church of the Nazarene and God's doing amazing things. These are some of our older leaders, but the next slide was that we organized the India National Board, and this is the first time we've ever had an India National Board, and these are the leaders that were elected, men and women, young people that are going to lead the church into the future. We're going to skip the next slide, and then I want to go to the one about ordinations in Central Asia. <laughs> Talk about nonsense. In the middle of war, we flew over the war. We ended up out in Kazakhstan. Sitting next to me is our district superintendent from Russia North. Sitting next to him is a young man from Russia who was ordained. Across from me is a young lady by the name of Olga. She's Russian. Her husband's Ukrainian. She was ordained. Almaz was ordained. So is my friend Gohar. That shouldn't even be happening. But four people from the former Soviet Union ordained in March in Central Asia. And then we went to Germany. Two of our pastors from Ukraine got out and came to Germany, and the district superintendent, she's standing at the end, and we were able to ordain them. We serve a God of nonsense. In the middle of war, we ordained six leaders from the Church of the Nazarene and the former Soviet Union this year. Thanks be to God. I'm going to skip the next one. I want to go to this one that says CAA, Creative Access Area. This is nonsense, but God is at work. And this is on a Sunday morning. And these are the little children and the families that have packed into a pastor's home, which had to be, the, the church was built on the second floor of the pastor's house. And there's probably 200 people they've crammed into this place. And at the end of every service, they pray the Lord's Prayer. And those are the children quoting the Lord's Prayer. And at District Assembly, the next picture I had the incredible privilege in a creative access nation with a Muslim government 
to ordain 29 new wow. elders in the Church of the Nazarene. Praise God. And today, the Church of the Nazarene is the fastest growing and largest evangelical denomination in that country. I'm really glad I serve a God of nonsense. And it's an incredible privilege to serve the Lord through the Church of the Nazarene. And part of my privilege today is to say thank you to all of you. If you wonder what your WEF does, you just saw a really short glimpse of what WEF does. God is at work and doing amazing things in this world. So thanks for letting me share that with you just really briefly.